Hi Bobcats! In this video, we're going to take a look at how chemists define reaction rates. Our objective for this video is to express reaction rates in relation to reaction stoichiometry. When we define the rate of a reaction, we want to have a uniform way of expressing what that means, regardless of whether we're monitoring a reactant or a product. In this simple reaction, reactant A turns into product B. We only have to work with A and B. And regardless of whether we're monitoring A or B, we'd like to come up with the exact same number for the rate of the reaction. Well, reaction rates are measured in terms of molarity per time. In this case, the horizontal axis is seconds, so we'll go with molarity per second. So this graph is showing us, if we start with reactant A at a concentration of 0.05 molar, over time, it's decreasing. This is what's being shown on the red line, right? So that red curve is showing us how the concentration decreases over time. So B being the product starts out at a concentration of zero molarity, and then over time, that molarity increases. So B is the product and A is the reactant. If we're going to monitor one of these chemicals for an expression for the reaction rate, we can do what's shown right here. And I'm going to rewrite that because that's a little small. The reaction rate is given as minus the change in the concentration of A divided by the change in time. Okay, why did we put a negative sign here? By convention, reaction rates are positive numbers, and the concentration of A gets smaller over time because it decreases as time goes by. So delta A is going to be a negative number. If we put another negative out in front, we have a negative times a negative, which makes a positive number. Um, also, if you aren't familiar with this notation, the square brackets around a chemical mean the molarity of that chemical. So square brackets around A mean the molarity of A. So if we have equipment set up to monitor chemical A, we can define the reaction rate as being the negative of the change in A over time. If instead we have equipment that's set up to monitor chemical B, we can define the reaction rate as being the change in B over time. Since B is a product, its change is a positive number. And so these two expressions should be equal to each other because for every one A that we lose, we gain one B. There's a one-to-one -one stoichiometry between A and B. Things get slightly more complicated if we have coefficients to deal with in our balanced equation. So in this case, we have 2A yield B. So for every two molecules of A that react, we get one B molecule. When we go to write the expression for the rate of this reaction, that rate needs to be a uniform number, again, whether it is that we're looking at chemical A or at chemical B. Since we lose two A's for every one B that we gain, if we monitor just one chemical or just the other, we're going to get two different numbers that differ by a factor of two. So the standard has become, when we define the reaction rate, to divide by the stoichiometric coefficient of the chemical from the balanced chemical equation. So chemical A is a reactant, which means we're going to need to put a negative sign. And then it has a coefficient of 2, so we'll put 1 half out in front, where that 2 down there in the bottom is the coefficient in the balanced equation. And then we'll have the change in the concentration of A. Whoops. That is A, not T. I'm getting ahead of myself. So the change in the concentration of A over the elapsed time. And then that will also be equal to the change in the concentration of B 
over the elapsed time. We could divide through by the coefficient of b as well, but it's a 1. So 1 divided by 1 is just 1, so there's not really any point in writing it. And since b is a product and its concentration increases with time, we just leave it as a positive number. Okay, so bottom line, before I move on to the next slide, um, reactants, when we write these expressions, make sure that you use the negative sign. And if you have a coefficient other than 1, whether it's a reactant or a product, make sure that you put 1 over the coefficient out in front of the expression. Let's look at a concrete example of how we would write these rate expressions. This reaction is known as the Haber process for the production of ammonia. If we were to write the rate expression, we have three different chemicals that we could write it in terms of, and the reaction rate should be the same no matter which chemical we're looking at. If we talk hydrogen, hydrogen is a reactant, so we'll need to put a minus sign, and then it has a coefficient of three, so we'll have a one-third. Then it'll be the change in the concentration of hydrogen divided by the change in time. If we wanted to write this in terms of nitrogen, nitrogen has a coefficient of 1, so we don't need to put any numbers in here, and it's a reactant, so we'll need to use a negative sign, and then it'll be the change in the concentration of nitrogen divided by the change in time. And there's one more chemical. This chemical, ammonia, is a product, so it'll be a positive sign, it has a coefficient of 2, so we'll put 1 half, and then we'll take the change in the concentration of ammonia over the change in time. So we have three different expressions that help us define the rate. Which one of these we might actually use in doing an experiment on this reaction would be determined by what equipment we have. If we have equipment that is very sensitive to hydrogen gas, we would use the first expression. If we had equipment that was sensitive to nitrogen gas, we'd use the second one. And for equipment that was sensitive to ammonia, we would do the third one. Our objective was to express reaction rates in relation to reaction stoichiometry. So remember, we're going to take 1 over the coefficient out in front of our expression. We're going to have the change in the concentration of a chemical over the elapsed time. And then this is going to be negative if the chemical we're monitoring is a reactant and positive if the number that we are monitoring is a product.